Brian, welcome back. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. In this uh, in this last episode, I was hoping we could get into a little bit more of the details when it comes to the cost analysis. Uh, yes. You know, okay. we we'll deal with that with different products at Dunn Lumber. Uh, or even just our value proposition, right? Okay, gosh, done in general, maybe it's a little bit more, but what are the other value propositions that come into it? You know, what's your return policy? What's your delivery policy? Are you gonna be there when they're, when the chips are down and yeah. there's a big problem and you're hanging out there financially? So up front, I know color typically, you know, color versus a prime board, mm -hmm. it's gonna be more. But I think the thing that you and I have talked about over time is you have to factor in the recommended painting and maintenance cycles of the product to really come out with a proper evaluation over a 15-year length of time. So, so I was hoping you could share. Yeah, with as I think about the biggest evaluation component is, are you factoring in when you're comparing a, let's say, a primed we'll say reside, residing your home, a prime solution versus a pre-finished solution. And you're right, you're, you're gonna pay more for a board that has pre-finishing on it because you're getting more. You're getting a paint finish. What I tend to find though is that people are not evaluating or really taking into consideration the cost of painting. So are they factoring in the cost of paint and the cost of the board? I think the other thing that uh, I think a lot of us have experienced, we see it at the grocery store today, we go to buy something at the grocery store, some of those supply chain issues that we saw over the last few years have caused a, a larger acceleration in cost. And one area specifically that we're seeing sort of accelerate is labor cost. And mm -hmm. so there's no question that the cost of labor has accelerated pretty greatly over the course of the last few years. And so if you were to go out and choose a painting solution today and hire a painter today, that cost, not necessarily just because the paint material has gone up, which it has, but the labor itself has gone up over the course of the years. Yeah, yeah. Could you touch on just some general numbers based on some of the research you've done? What a, and I know it varies. You know, yeah. we're in the Northwest here, and there's some very high-end paint companies that you might pay 50 grand to repaint your house, and some unregistered person chucking a truck might come. I'll paint it for five. Yeah, and yeah. We've looked at historical averages, and we've tried to look at it across the U.S. And so you're right; different geographies are going to have very different paint costs. So you think about California, for example, has higher paint costs per square foot than other places, and part of that has to do with obviously the things they're painting, right? What is the physical structures they're painting? Some of it has to do with how close you are to the proximity of, let's say, the ocean, right? So the salt air, how does mm. that affect it? So there's no question that different marketplaces and different areas have a different cost of painting. What we've seen is that, and most paint manufacturers would say, that an average coating lifespan is somewhere between seven to 10 years, okay? So if you think about well, what's it gonna cost for me to paint, it's about every seven to 10 years you will have to repaint as part of your maintenance cycle. And we've seen, you know, I would say maybe pre-COVID, that was a, you know, a seven thousand dollar price tag to basically across the U.S. average cost to paint a house. That number is easily now eighty five hundred dollars or nine thousand dollars. And to your earlier point, again, we're talking average. There are definitely other options out there on on the higher end, but across the board, we'll say for an average, let's say twenty five hundred square foot house. You're talking about an, an eight to nine thousand dollar paint cycle cost, and if you need to do that in seven years, that means seven years from now, let's say you you resided your house and you used a solution that isn't pre-finished like Color Plus, you may need to paint in seven years. You're going to spend eight to nine thousand dollars. Gotcha. Now, if you're in that house for again, I know not many of us are living in our homes for thirty years mm -hmm. like the good old days. But the average person living in a home is going to be probably 15 years. And so when you think about that, that may be two paint cycles, two maintenance cycles that you're going to have to manage through. And again, today that cost might be $8,000. You could be spending $16,000 over the lifespan of your exterior repainting. And so that's where that idea of are you factoring in your return on investment? Are you factoring in the long-term cost to maintain that project? it will be less expensive if you're choosing a product that obviously maintains its paint, 
maintains the ability to not chip, not crack, and, and is five times better fade resistant, yeah. there's no question that that is a there will be a lower maintenance solution and will allow you to potentially defer some of those paint cycles. Now, maybe yeah. not both, depending on the color you choose. So dark yeah. colors obviously will fade faster than a light color will, yeah. but generally speaking, we know that over the course of 15 years, you will probably defer a minimum of one paint cycle, yeah. which again, today's average cost could be eight to nine thousand dollars yeah so well i'm old enough to have experienced some of your product on the wall and from my standpoint just the quality of the adhesion and how it gets done in the first place i'm thinking it's going to make a painter's job way easier down the road and i think it, it seems like the projects i've been exposed to 15 years is not uh, it's not a stretch by any means and it seems like you won't have a lot of prep and messing around i mean you know clean it and you'll kind of be on your way, it seems like, as far as I repaint. Yeah, painters, uh, anytime I see a painter, if I'm at a, a trade show or something and a painter comes by, I love your stuff, I love your stuff, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's so easy to, to, to maintain, it's so easy if you do need to paint. So if you yeah. buy the house and it's brown and you don't like brown and you want gray, it's very easy. It's uh, make sure it's clean, make sure that you know there's no debris or anything like that, and, and you can paint right over the product. So mm -hmm. in most applications with, with, with our product, you don't need to reprime. You can paint over an existing field applied paint or you could paint over Color Plus. Yeah. Sometimes I've had customers that say, well, I'm gonna choose this blue and it may be more aggressive than the next homeowner wants. And I go, it's not a problem. If the next homeowner decides they want yellow, they can paint over top of the blue and make it yellow. So maintaining it uh, if you need to in that 15 year cycle, there's not a ton of prep. And so yeah. it does help with that repaint cost. Yeah. You don't have to scrape it, you don't have to putty it, you don't have to reprime it. Yeah. It is a faster sort of solution to, yeah. to freshen up if you decide you want to freshen yeah. up. Yeah, so the advice was factor in the quality on the upfront, just the quality of the paint job and just the cost. When you're looking at your quote, make sure you add in your, yes. your paint bid. That's right. Factor that in, and then at the end of the day, you're still not gonna get as good a product with a field applied. So, that's right, that's yeah. right. I think it's, yeah, it's upfront cost plus your cost to paint, and then being cognizant of what is my maintenance cycle, right? I, any products that I choose to install, there's a possibility that I have to maintain or I have to replace. Mm -hmm. And so what does that life cycle of that product look like? Yeah. So am I gonna have to repaint or am I gonna have to replumb or am I gonna have to you know, replace my fixture on my sink? All of those I, I think need to be factored in when you're mm -hmm. deciding. Because if you're choosing a quality product that has a longer life cycle, you're deferring maintenance mm -hmm. costs, you're deferring long-term investment into trying to maintain a, an attractive home, whether it's yeah your to, to live in or, or whether it's for a resale standpoint. Yeah. So. Well, and with the Color Plus, I guess you also get the 15-year limited warranty too. That's right. So, you know, prime, hire a painter, there's no <laughs> warranty. I mean, maybe they'll say something, but uh, we know where that can go too, so. Well, and I think the biggest challenge that we see with a prime application is if there is an issue, and it happens, manufacturers, you know, can have issues. If there is an issue and the product isn't done right, so you buy a gallon of paint and there's an issue with the paint, typically what you get is a gallon of paint. Right. Not the person to also come out and apply that paint. And so that cost of having to pay out of pocket to repair or to repaint something, if there is an issue, it could be a pretty a pretty big, yeah. pretty big cost. Yeah, so. no doubt about it. Well, I'm really glad we covered everything in this series and especially this last episode on the you know, a true 15 year life cycle cost analysis. And it got super value for the end user. Thank Absolutely. You, Thanks for having me. You Appreciate it. it.